Mark was my elder brother. We, there's only a year difference in age and we were very, very close. Mark was the most genuine, kind, loving person. He never judged a book by its cover. He was very open. But the biggest thing about Mark is, is he had a heart of gold. Mark was 59 when he was diagnosed. He was diagnosed on the 2nd of August, 2018, with MND. Mark said just before they came to give him his diagnosis, he was hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. And unfortunately, we got the worst. Mark's prognosis was, I'm sorry, Mark, you've got MND. There is no cure. You've got about two years to live. Ashgate, Ashgate for us came out of the beautiful blue sky. What Ashgate gave to Mark and in turn to me was something out of this world. It was care, beyond anything that we'd ever experienced before. There's people that care, and then there's carers. And we felt, excuse me, that someone had took us into their loving arms and had got us. And they appeared at such a time when Mark was really deteriorating. And then Helen came into our lives. I got a call. She said, hi, my name's Helen. I'm calling from Ashgate. How's Mark? Would you like me to come out and see him? And I just felt, just never met this person. Just a voice. And I was like, please, could you, you know, come out and see Mark? And she came out within days, you know, arranged a time. And she walked into our Mark's house and it was like, what? welcoming family. It's like we'd known her and all our lives. And it was like she'd known us all her life too. Again, so caring, sincere, and can I say loving? That's what we felt most from her, as though she actually loved us. Gosh, you look fine. amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You do too. You instantly, instantly picked up on how we worked, how Mark was, what type of guy he was. You know, why I was there, why we were so close, why just everything. You had that, you, you just like took it all in in a very short space of time. I think the first time you come, it was a quite a long visit. I think we were there for about two hours. Yeah, because it was quite intense as well, wasn't it? Because it was kind of, he wanted to get his point across how he wanted to progress, basically. Yes. And this is what he wanted now, and this is how it's going to be. Yes. And just orchestrated it into such a simple and wonderful thing. Oh. And you cared. You absolutely cared. You, you can't fake what you do. And I don't know if I ever told you this before. Walked back into the room and Mark looked at me and I'm all, you know, well, we looked at one another and uh, we both similarly said it together. Earth Angel. Oh gosh. <laughs> and you are, you absolutely are. What you did for my brother and in turn for me, I haven't got the vocabulary to tell you how grateful and thankful that you were our earth angel came into our sure, life. That's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how to reply to that, to be honest. And then, I don't know if you can remember saying this to me. Sure, you can step back now from being a carer and step mm. forward again as Mark's sister. Yeah, that, and, you know, you time was precious. We know the disease that Mark had was, yeah. it was aggressive and time was short and it was meant to be your time. Yes. And not doing, you know, chasing things. I think that's what the team was there for. Yeah. Everyone else played the part and you were there to look after Mark. Yeah. But you pulled it all together. You pulled everything together. We don't know where <laughs> we would have been without yeah. you and Ashgate. Yeah. That's how I would want somebody to respect, treat, care for somebody I love. Yeah. So I just think if I can do that for other people. You never stopped. 
you never stopped caring for us. You know, you were wonderful. You are <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. That's really, really kind.